The 2023 Subaru Forester orders will be closing this week. I'm going to be talking about details on what to expect when the 2024 Subaru model will come out, what the pricing is going to look like, and what changes we expect to see on the 2024 model year. And lastly, just giving you an overall idea to set the right expectation if you are in the market for a Forester, what to expect moving forward, whether you're trying to buy one of the last remaining 2023s or one of the new 2024 Subaru Foresters. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly Subaru videos all on Subaru related topics. So if you enjoy those types of videos, consider clicking the subscribe button down below. If you guys have any questions, leave those down below. And as always, if you guys learn something new and get value out of this video, please be sure to click the like button. That would really help me out a ton and I would really appreciate it. So first things first, when do the 2023 Subaru Forester orders close? Meaning when will you no longer be able to custom order a 2023 Forester. They close this Friday, August 4th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So that'll be the last time that you can place an order for a Forester. Depending on your dealership, your local dealership's inventory levels and their allocation, those, those orders may have already closed. They may have already sold out of, of all that they are going to be getting. Uh, so they may have exhausted all their allocation that they're going to be getting for the 2023 Forester. So check with your local retailer. If you're lucky, you might find a couple left over. We had 10 come to us about a week early, end of last week. We're in the last week of July here, a big push for the end of the month. We've already sold all but I believe three of them. So uh, these typically go very quick. They're much like our cross treks. They, they're in high demand and they sell really quick. So if the 2023 Forester orders are closing, what does that look like for the 2024s? When will those be available? Usually when we do a model year changeover, it can take anywhere from a few days to even a few weeks before the new model year is available to order. So I, I expect that hopefully uh, it only takes within a week for 2024 orders to open up for the new Forester, but it could take as much as even a month before those orders open up and become available. And those cars that are ordered, or even if they're not ordered, the ones that we are first going to be receiving from Subaru will likely arrive at the end of the year. For the last two years, both for the 2022 and the 2023 Forester model year, we have received them in December. Hopefully we get them a little bit sooner than that, but that is what I would expect. If you're looking for a 2024 model, it is probably going to be the end of the year, probably the very, very end of the year before you get it. So what is going to be different for the 2024 model year? I know that is a, a burning question that a lot of people have had here on YouTube, customers that come in trying to determine whether or not you should hold out and get the newest model year. There's gonna be something new that you don't wanna miss out on. As far as I know, now this is not official, but as far as I know, there are no changes for the 24 model year. They are going to stay the same for the 24 model year, and uh, we won't see changes until the 25 model year. So at the end of 2024, so about a year, year and a half from now, we are going to see a changeover, a new generation for the Subaru Forester. Hopefully that's at least what it sounds like. And what changes we expect to see on that 25, the 2025 model year are going to be probably a, a new fascia design, probably new wheels and no word yet, but we may even get the larger touchscreen display. So right now the Forester has, is the only model left that has the smaller six and a half or here the eight inch touchscreen display. But now all the Subaru models are moving over to this larger 11.6 inch touchscreen display. We first saw it in the Outback and now it's moved over to every other Subaru model in the lineup. So I'd be willing to bet that will probably change over soon for the, uh, the next generation, probably the 2025 model year. I don't know if there will be any major trim level changes aside from potentially uh, there's talks of, of a hybrid, which I think is a, a smart move on Subaru's part. If you look at the Toyota RAV4, which is the equivalent, if you move over to a Subaru Forester, those are the two that are commonly compared. The RAV4 hybrid is wildly popular and has been incredibly successful with Toyota. So I, I could see Subaru doing a hybrid version in the Forester and uh, maybe even some other Subaru models as well, but that remains to be seen. And of course, I'll be telling you guys all about those details as they are released once we have that information from Subaru. If the 2023 and 2024 Subaru Forester are going to be identical, what does that mean for price? Well, the trend that we have seen 
over the last couple of years when they keep the model the exact same or closely identical to the previous year they keep it within the same generation you typically only see around a 500 dollars difference on price now i don't have official pricing yet on the 2024 but if they do indeed keep the car the same you're probably going to see the list price with msrp increase by about 500 dollars. could be more could be less uh, i don't know yet but we'll, we'll be talking about that in future videos coming up if you guys are curious about the pricing on the three models we have here but we continue to sell at msrp on the subaru forester uh, if you remember from one of my last videos, I talked about market demand, pricing, and how that all works out, how that plays out. If you are curious about what prices you can expect on a Forester, these are like the cross tracks, they're very high in demand. Most of them sell before they arrive, and the ones that do arrive on the lot typically get sold in a matter of days. So we sell right at MSRP. Now that could change in the next coming months as interest rates continue to go up, as student loan repayment begins again that's going to cause affordability to go down and you might see some discounts on these if inventory is sitting on the ground so this is a a forester limited trim it does not have the optional package the optional package on this is listed as 32 but that doesn't really mean anything it, just know that if it has an optional package that particular trim level has maybe some extra add-ons uh, the optional package for this one is the uh, the navigation and the uh, heated steering wheel but if you don't need that then you can opt out of it on this this standard limited and these are all a la carte accessories right here the uh, the auto dimming mirror with compass and home link exterior auto dimming mirrors the rear seat protectors on the back of the seat all weather floor liners for all weather protection they all come with carpet um, the led upgraded interior lights and the cargo net that will bring you down here after destination and delivery to 35,696. We do not have any dealer markups, so you won't see add-ons for market adjustments or lack of inventory or pinstriping or nitrogen or any of, any of those crazy bogus fees. Uh, we'll go over here. This is the highest trim level. This is a Forester Touring in the Magnetite Gray. This is one of my all-time favorite colors, by the way. And the Touring has the coolest looking Forester wheels, in my opinion. This design is the best with that satin chrome and the optional brown interior. Uh, this one is, so the, the Touring just comes standard. There's no optional uh, packages, but you do, see, you do see these a la carte accessories. If you combine a, a bunch of them together, they put them in as popular packages. So there's $1,027 for uh, the group of uh, five or six accessories here. Uh, it has the aero crossbar set up on top and the rear seat protector and LED upgrade as well. After destination delivery, this one is $39,530. So that is what it looks like on the touring trim. And then if we go over here to the wilderness, this one is incredibly popular in that exclusive geyser blue color has the cool badging on it here with the, uh, the matte uh, finish on the mirrors giving it that rugged look and keeping it from getting scratched up if you are taking it off-road uh, this one is the wilderness trim level but it has the optional package 22 you'll notice this is what you can look at on any window sticker for any subaru to identify if it has an optional package uh, this has the upgraded audio system with the navigation and the power lift gate so that's all that you get for that 1850 if you want these a la carte accessories here you can see just as the others ads for those as well so you can see what the cost is associated with each one go down here and this one is 38,601 so this one's just shy of the price of a touring trim level but it is the the wilderness you get the satin black wheels the the uh, uh, geolander all-terrain tires the satin finish decal on the hood little bit of a different design up front compared to the touring trim level different grille design different um, led fog light setup here and then you have the the anodized copper finish around the the car so uh, so yeah that is what you can expect to pay for these specific 2023 forester trim levels the 2024 subaru forester as far as I know, it's still going to be produced exclusively at the Gunma Japan plant overseas, whereas some of our other Subaru models like the Outbacks and half of the Crosstrek lineup are now 
produced over at the Lafayette, Indiana plant. What that means is that production takes a little bit longer for these foresters to get here. And that also means that uh, supply can a lot of times be a lot tighter on the forester trim levels compared to say an Outback. So looking ahead, you'll probably see prices holding firm on these at least until market demand starts diving down. As I mentioned before, with interest rates going up, with the student loan repayment uh, pause ending in October or this fall, we're going to see uh, some buyer demand drop. I would be willing to bet we're going to see buyer demand drop because of that, but that all remains to be seen. I will keep you guys updated. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please remember to click the like button. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.